This was a really fun edit. I think you're going to enjoy today. I use Photoshop. I use Lightroom. I use Topaz Studio too. Hey, and by the way, uh, you can save 15% on Topaz products if you click on my affiliate link in the description below and uh, use my coupon code David Kelly. That's all one word, David Kelly at checkout. You'll save some, uh, save some money. You'll get 15% off. This helps me. I make a small commission, helps my channel to grow, helps me to keep these videos coming at you. And I really appreciate it. Well, anyway, this is going to be a fun little edit today. It's not going to be that hard to do, but without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> We're starting out here in Lightroom, and I really like this image. I think it looks it looks really cool. I love leaves. This is some leaves shot in some water up in Ohio Pow in Pennsylvania, Ohio Pow State Park, that is. And uh, no adjustments, detail. I have my uh, sharpening is on right now at default. I'm going to shut it off. No noise reduction whatsoever. And I do have some lens corrections on here. Remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections, but no adjustments on it whatsoever. And I think it looks pretty nice right like it is here. I'm going to do some little adjustments here, but first I'm going to click on the crop tool, turn my lights out. I always like to do this this is a good tip when you're cropping your image it kind of helps you to isolate your image i'm just going to start to pull in on this crop here i think i might cut this leaf off up here a little bit or no maybe not i might leave it in there maybe pull up on the bottom a little bit something like that but you see how when your lights are out it kind of helps you see things give this a little bit of room up here and how do i want to center this Maybe, maybe like that. Decisions, decisions. I think that looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, type my return key that accepts the crop. Now let's turn my lights back on. And uh, let's hit auto. I always like to hit auto and see what Lightroom does to this uh, image. Okay, I hate that. I think that looks horrible. So I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust it myself. Now, I think the uh, temperature and tint looks pretty good. I may touch that in a second here, but let's play with the uh, exposure here. Do I want to darken it up any? Maybe, maybe just a slight bit. Let's give it maybe just a tad of contrast. Pull the highlights back just a little bit. Let's open up the shadows a slight bit. And the whites and black look pretty good. Let's open up the whites. I might just open up the whites a little bit here. I'm just going totally by eye here to where I get it to where I like it. I'm not going to touch the texture or the clarity clarity or dehaze yet because I'm going to run this into uh, Topaz Denoise AI because I definitely have to get rid of some of the noise here because I shot this at ISO 1600. So it's going to have a lot of noise on it. Um, how about the vibrance? So I want to give it any vibrance. Yeah, I think it could use some vibrance, maybe somewhere right around there. And how about saturation? Maybe just a, a hint of saturation. It's a, hey, it's a colorful fall leaves, right? And eh, that might be too much saturation. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. Maybe, maybe like that around a four. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and right click it now and edit in uh, Photoshop and we'll get started. We're now in Photoshop. Now, I just want to show you what I did. I duplicated the background layer and called it Topaz Denoise AI. I ran it into Topaz Denoise AI just to save time and uh, came back with this. And you've seen me, if you've watched my videos in the past, you've seen me work with Topaz Denoise. It's so simple to use, okay? So I didn't want to waste the time today. Let me go ahead and zoom in on the image here. So you can really see the noise. Okay, so here's before. See all that noise in there and the sharpness of the image right here? And the image is relatively sharp, so I don't need to run Sharpen AI on it. Uh, Topaz Denoise AI, the sharpening in Topaz Denoise AI took care of it. So there we go. So that is that. And next, I want to add a blank layer above this because I want to use the um, healing tool so I can get rid of some of the little spots on my image, like right in here and here. That's some water right there, but I might heal that. I don't know. And if I heal up some of the leaves, but let's do some healing. And when you have your healing brush on, make sure you have a sample all layer set. Now, I don't want to do healing on my actual, actual pixel layer. I want to do it on the actual blank layer here. And this lets me do that. So let me just go ahead and heal up some areas right in here. Maybe that right there. 
a little bit of light on there, but it's drawing my eye, so I'm going to get rid of that, I think. Uh, there's just any little blemishes and things that, that are bothering you. You know, get rid of, like, right there is a little blemish or a little dot. I don't like it. Some little white flecks in here. To me, take your time and do this because it'll really make a big deal in your images. People say, why do your images look better than mine? Well, because I heal them. I heal my images when I start out. And I think that's important. So, you know, it is a fall leaf. It's got some holes in it, but you don't want the holes. Heal them. You know, get rid of them. Let's get a nice looking leaf here. Because it is cool looking, right? But I don't need this little hole in the leaf here or right in here. You don't have to get them all, but any any of the ones that are bugging you, just heal them up. And this healing healing tool does a magnificent job of getting rid of this kind of stuff. You know, but take your time. Let me heal over this just to see what happens here. Yeah, I kind of like that because my eyes drawn right to that. So any light areas that was light right there, and your eyes going to be drawn to it. So if you don't want your eye drawn to things, get rid of it. Maybe get rid of this. Yeah, let me heal this up. I want you to look good, Mr. Leaf. Even here, if I make my healing brush a little bit bigger, I can come along here. And see how it just fills that all right in? There's a little bit. Okay, so that looks cool. Even here, watch. See if I can heal that. Pretty cool, huh? This area right here. I'm trying. I'm just working on it. Yeah, there it goes. See that? It's pretty cool, right? It just magically fills itself in. That's a little bit of water, but it's light and it's bugging my eye. So I'm going to get rid of it. Here's a little spot right there. Okay, just taking my time, but you see what I'm doing here and it makes all the difference in the world. Now let's shut off this healing layer right here. See, there's the before and there's the after, but a big difference, right? Let's go ahead and rename this healing so we know. And now I'm going to use my Tony Kuiper action just to pull this all together. You know, that's that shift option command or control E, but I can just click this button right here and just bring everything together. And we'll call this, uh, I'm going to call this Topaz Studio 2 because I'm going to send it into Topaz Studio 2 and do a little bit of, um, add some detail to some of the leaves and maybe work with precision contrast. That's really what I like Topaz Studio 2 for when I'm working on uh, straightforward images rather than artistic renditions of images. Let's go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2 and we'll get started here. Let me start out by going to the precision contrast and let's pull up the micro. Yeah, a little bit of micro here. See how the nice details are starting to pop. See if I pull that way up. I mean, you can go crazy here and that looks kind of cool, right? That might be a nice interpretation of this image actually, right? I actually kind of like that. You know what? I think I'm going to go with that. I didn't think I would get that result, but I really, I really think that looks really cool. Let's pull up our low contrast a little bit. There's a lot of texture in this image, so let's go ahead and take advantage of that texture and use it in our favor. How about a little bit of medium? Yeah, a little bit of medium. And how about high? I don't think I want too much high in here. I'm going to leave the high right where it is. And maybe pull the medium back just a little bit. Let me readjust the low here. Like so. And maybe just pull the micro. Don't go too crazy here. You know, like I said, I have a tendency of going like, wow, man, that looks really awesome. Hold the presses. Let's, let's pull that micro back a little bit. You know, I'd rather err on the side of having a little bit less than more because if you get too much it's hard to get rid of it later and i was thinking of maybe just masking it onto the leaves and things but i actually like it over the whole image now here's the before and here's the after what do you think and before you answer that question study the image for a little bit and make sure that you're happy you know if you think you went a little too strong don't forget you have this opacity slider it's a big friend to you Start to pull it back a little bit. You know what? And I might do that back to around a 0.79. So here's a before and here's our after. But doesn't that uh, precision contrast really do magical things to your image? And on this image, like I said, I think it works well over the entire image. But a lot of times I'm just going to mask it into areas that I want to draw my viewer's attention to. 
Let's try one more thing and see if it works, and that is let's go to Add Filter. Let's go to Precision Detail. Now, remember, this is more of a sharpening type uh, filter. Let's go with Small Detail. Now, I'm only looking at the leaves now. This is something where I'll be masking. So let's just pull up the Small Detail. Okay, we're bringing up some detail there. I'm going to bring up the overall Medium Detail a little bit here. And how about the Large Detail? Too much. Just a little bit of that. Something like that. Let's go to the layer mask right here. Click there. Let's go to the three dots and invert it to hide it from everything. We'll click on brush. And we'll take our transparency, drag it the whole way to the right so we turn our brush white to reveal the areas we're going to paint over. Let's uh, take our softness and pull it in just a little bit. Make our radius a little bit smaller. And uh, keep our edge aware on. Now let's... Let's experiment here by painting over this leaf right here. So I just want to pop a little bit of uh, extra detail on this leaf. Yeah, see that? Isn't that cool? Let's get this one. You could get the stem too. I'm, I'm going to forget that for now because it's going to take too long. I don't want this tutorial going too long. It's not going to matter all that much. Now with that edge aware on, it's going to protect itself around the edges. And I love the masking inside of... Uh, Topaz Studio too. It's really great. And I like the red overlay too. It lets you see where you're painting, which is really nice. Okay. Now there's that leaf. Pops out some detail. And hey, let's not leave this guy out. I don't, I'm thinking I don't want quite as much detail on him. So I'm going to pull the transparency back just a little bit on this leaf here. Make my uh, radius a little bit smaller. It's a smaller leaf. Let's just paint around this leaf here. Like so. Yeah, that looks cool. Now, here's the before and here's the after. So that looks really good. And if you think you went too far, again, you can take this opacity. Let's take it the whole way off and let's build it up slowly because I don't want to go too crazy here. And I'm thinking maybe right there. So we've come from here and one to here. I'm really satisfied with this. And if we're happy, all we need to do is come and click accept. And that'll bring us right back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. Now, all I think I want to do to this to finish it off would be to add a vignette around it. So I'm going to get a lasso tool. And I'm going to draw my own loose vignette around here like this, something like so. I'm going to use my Tony Kuiper action. I'm going to click on TK right here where this little play is. This is where your actions live and get this freehand vignette. And it feathers this for you, and you can see it's a 396. You can adjust this. It's just a Gaussian blur, but that looks good. I'm going to click OK. And then what it does is it just... Uh, gives you a curves adjustment layer with no adjustment on the curve, but it puts it in the multiply blend mode. Let's see, here's the before and here's the after. And usually you'll find that the 50% opacity that the action default set is really good. So again, here's the before and here's the after. If you wanted to make it darker, you could just take the opacity and drag it more to the right if you wanted to. Or if you wanted it less dark, drag it to the left. But I think that 50% is really good I might just go a little bit over that 50% to maybe 61%. But here is before the vignette, and here is after the vignette. And I think that looks really nice. Now, I don't think I'm, I, I think I'm done with this image, but I might want to come back to it later and do some more work on it. So I'm going to leave all my layers intact. All I'm going to do is come up here to File and click Save. And that goes, that will go ahead and save it. And next, when I go back into Lightroom, it will be waiting for me there. And here we are in Lightroom, and here is our image. Now, here's the original, and here is our edit. Let's just put these side by side and compare the two images side by side. Let me turn the lights out so you can really see it here. Image on the left is the edit. Image on the right is right out of the camera. So I'm really happy with this, with these results. I love that extra texture that we've added with Topaz Studio 2. Well, this was a fun little edit today.
Well, there it is. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this one today. This was a fun little edit. Uh, I love fall leaves. You know, I love uh, shooting leaves on the ground or in the water, whatever. Can give you some really beautiful shots. So give that a try. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, and it helps my channel grow and I really appreciate it.